there, I'm Nick, and this is Portable, where we look at the portable ports of console games. In an effort to prepare for the inevitable rise of our lizard overlords as they come up from the Earth's core to take over the surface world, I thought it might be fun to take a look at Gex. The series has always fascinated me. I love the premise, taking the sassy lizard through television-themed levels, but I've never actually beaten any of the games. I've dabbled in them plenty, but there was always a little something holding me back, a little coat of polish away from pushing me through the levels. Regardless, it's a series I've always wanted to dive back into, and one I remember fondly, despite the flaws. But that intrigue grew more once I discovered they actually made some adventures for the Game Boy Color, and this is for a couple of reasons. First off, it's a 2D version of a 3D console game. Wanted to see how they crammed that into a Game Boy. And second, well, if you weren't aware, these games are sequels to, well, surprise, Gex. And that original game was a 2D platformer. So I look at the Game Boy version as both a demake of the source material and as a continuation of the original game's mechanics. And while it is both of those things to an extent, it unfortunately is not a great time. So what's wrong with it? Well, the basic idea of making a 2D version of Enter the Gecko, while ambitious, not a great idea. See, the console version of Enter the Gecko was a 3D platformer. And if you're not aware, those are usually collectathons. These have you running around the map exploring and collecting a certain amount of items so you can get a lay of the land and explore things to your heart's content. And unless you're a Metroidvania and have a map handy, that doesn't work too well on a 2D plane. You'll constantly be jumping back into the same levels over and over again tasked with a different objective. Since you don't have multiple directions you can run off to and explore willy-nilly, you're going to be running into the same areas, dealing with the same hazards, yet somehow still getting lost every time. Now this would be a little bit better if you had the same versatility as the original Gex game. And while you essentially have the same moveset, the controls aren't great. I mean, they're decent enough. I started off the game and first thought, well, it's not so bad. I could get used to this. But then I quickly learned that you have a very limited amount of walls you can climb on, unlike the original game. And you have this horrible automatic run. See, that's another thing in 3D platformers. Since you usually have a joystick, depending on how much pressure you put on it, depends on how quickly your character's moving. But for some reason, they thought they'd try and emulate it in some weird way. You always start off walking slowly, then after a few seconds you break off into a sprint. Unlike Mario where you basically have a run button, or Sonic where it gradually picks up the momentum, this automatic setup has as many problems as you would expect in a format like this. Missing platforms or not being able to react to an enemy in time? It's kind of rough. And again, the level design doesn't help. Like I said, you're going to be doing these over and over again trying to accomplish different objectives. There's no map or pointers or anything to help you navigate through this mess. Even the hub world's a nightmare to get through. Oh, and, and they have a password system. Yes, this game that's too big for its own good has a stinking password system. And of course, it's a mess. Look at this insanity. So get this, not only do you have to fill out like 30 spaces with arrows, you also need to keep track of which set of arrows you're using. Hold down A and it'll give you one set, and holding down B, surprise, gives you another. Or you could just use save states on an emulator. What? What's Ido's gonna do about it? They don't care about this game, this thing's like two bucks online. But we have yet to cover the worst offense of this game. It's stripped out all the personality Gex is known for. I mean, come on, look at those glasses. That scale boy has so much radical tood. Unlike the console games, you won't be hearing the same one-liners over and over again. And I'm sure many would think that that's a plus, but come on, it's Gex. It's just not the same without the outdated references. How am I supposed to know when it's tail time? All that said, this is still strangely charming. I don't know what it is, I just love seeing games like this. And it's far from unplayable. You can get through it, it's just not as polished as the likes of Mario. All the same, I appreciate the collectathon style trying to be incorporated in this weird 2D setting. And things only got better with its sequel. Yup, Gex 3 Deep Cover Gecko also had a Game Boy Color version. Deep Pocket Gecko. Oh, that's that's adorable. I get it. I get it. That's <laughs> Also, did anyone else think it was weird how Enter the Gecko is like a parody of James Bond and Deep Cover Gecko is clearly a parody of Austin Powers, which is already a parody of James Bond? So does, does that make that a parody of a parody? For the most part, Deep Pocket Gecko is not too different from the last game, but there are some changes. And and most of them are for the better. The Gex sprite looks a little better, I think? Well, he at least gets cute little costumes in each new level, but he's also somehow even more impatient than Sonic the Hedgehog. Seriously, the moment you let up on the movement controls, he just stares at you. Like, that's the immediate animation, just stares straight at you. What is your hurry, friend? Calm 
down. He also controls a little better. That awkward speed up problem is completely removed. He stays at one constant speed the entire time. And yes, that makes all the difference. And unlike the last game, this one's made exclusively for the Game Boy Color. The last one could be played on both the original Game Boy and Game Boy Color. This one is exclusively for the color, and the power-up shows. Levels are way more detailed this time around. The levels are huge, and it at least tries to emulate the level layout of the 3D games. Not well, mind you, but it's at least kind of fun seeing the strangeness of the original version on the Game Boy. I'm not exactly giving this a recommendation. If you're looking for a solid platformer, you're not going to find it here. But if you are interested in checking out what an 8-bit 2D version of a collectathon looks like, if you're that hardcore of a fan of Gex, well, it's fine. If you are familiar with the Gex series, and you know the console versions like the back of your hand, give these a shot. Seriously, I would love to know how hardcore fans take to this version of these games. But that's all we got for today, guys. I want to thank everybody, as always, for watching, leaving the suggestions I have yet to actually cover on the show, but I will in due time, I promise. We're keeping it short for this week because, well, I wanted to keep it nice and breezy today. I have a brand new show idea I've been wanting to get off the ground for years, and I think it's about time I got that done. So stick around next week because it's going to get, well, interesting. But until then, toot toot lizard people.